those who would research for This is a... Today we're going to be addressing this board, which is the uh, power supply section and also the audio out. And so the first thing I've got to do is get all the solder off of these connections because I'm going to replace all these wires. I, I don't trust the insulation on them. And since I've replaced so many of the other wires anyway, uh, it's not like leaving these alone is going to make the radio any more original. So there's lots and lots and lots of wires to pull out of here. This little silver block uh, is a little giant capacitor. It's actually two capacitors in a box. Uh, and I think that this is something that was added later because it doesn't appear on the schematic, uh, probably to decrease buzzing. The sockets for the tubes have a little clamp uh, for each of the pins that holds onto the insulation of the wire. So I have to pry that open before I can unsolder the wire off the top of it. Okay, so that's all the wires gone, which makes it uh, a little easier to clean the thing up. And it's no fun, as anyone knows, to work on something that's filthy. I'm not going to bore you with watching every single moment of cleaning this up, but here's a little bit of it. Now that it's all cleaned up, I can start working on getting these resistors off of here. I would have liked to have kept them because they're unique looking uh, and you can't get replacements anyway that look like them. But the problem is that some of the values have drifted on these. In fact, one of these that's supposed to be 18K actually reads 55K. So I'm going to have to, if I want to keep this looking original, uh, replicate the look of those. So that'll be a little bit later. Um, if you notice, there's something flopping around on the board that looks like a terminal strip. What that is is actually a wire-wound resistor. It's got a coil on one side and a coil on the other side. It's two different resistors, really. But the reason it's flopping around is I've removed a rivet uh, that it shared with something that's already been removed, which is another wire-wound resistor that actually is dead. So I'm going to have to do something about that as well. Now, this little plastic box here is a capacitor. Uh, there are several like this in the radio. There's two that are just like this, um, and then there's some that are similar. And I need to take these off because they're almost certainly dead as well. And uh, I hate the fact that this is held on with rivets. Some of them are screwed on. And, of course, I break it trying to pry it out of there. That's all right. I can glue it back together. Like seemingly everything else in this radio, the inside of this capacitor is full of pitch. Here's that other wire round resistor that I removed that I said was bad. Well, it's bad because all the wires in here are all brittle and disintegrating. I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to get all the insides out of it and clean it up and put it back together again as a dummy. Uh, there's really no way to repair this or get a of uh, an exact substitute for it. So I'm just gonna have to put this in there as a stand-in and put something to act as the actual resistor somewhere where you can't see it. And there you go, all cleaned up and reassembled and riveted onto the board. And it looks like the original resistor, but it's not gonna do anything as it is. And now the time has come to replace all the wires. Now, on the diagram, the wires are actually color-coded, but I'm not going to go to all that trouble. I'm just going to replace them all with the same color, uh, vintage-looking wire.
That's all the wires. Now it's resistor time. I've heard these resistors referred to as dog bones, although these particularly don't look as much like dog bones as some other ones. Uh, but the diameter of the body of these is very similar to that of this pen barrel. So I'm going to cut a section of plastic out of this pen barrel and use it as the basis for my replica. For the actual functional part of this, I've got a couple of modern resistors, they're one watt resistors, and to get the exact resistance I'm looking for, I need to solder two of these in line. And then once I've got those soldered together, I can put them inside the body of the fake resistor. Now I just need to add some longer, heavier wires on the ends uh, as the connections that you actually use to hook this up to the circuit board. And to cap it off, it's our old friend Epoxy Putty, which I will mix up and use to make the rounded ends of the little dog bone. Once it's had time to set up, then we can use our rotary tool to clean it up a little bit. Now to replicate the look, we need to wind the leads around the ends, just like on the original. Now we hit it with some black primer, and then we can spray it with our color of choice, and we are all done. Or maybe not. I didn't get the right number of turns of wire on this thing. Uh, it's supposed to go around once and then a half. So I'm going to have to pull these out, scrape some paint off the wires. Okay, so I've replicated four resistors. We have yellow, which is 180K. We have red, which is 50K. We've got black, which is 500K, and blue, which is 250K. And we're gonna install all of those onto the board. Now with all those installed, I'm going to address that capacitor. First, I'm going to hit it with a heat gun to soften that pitch and dig the old capacitor out of the inside of that plastic case. This little guy is the modern equivalent of the capacitor that was in here, and it takes up just a fraction of the space.
I'll fix it into place with a little bit of epoxy putty. And you'll note, because I'm an idiot, I forgot to put on some gloves this time. And I'm going to get black all over my fingers and have to use uh, acetone to get it off. Do as I say, not as I do. Now we'll install that replacement capacitor. So here's what we're going to do about that wire wound resistor. I'm going to take those two modern wire wound resistors. I'm going to drill some holes in the board. I'm going to mount those resistors on the other side of the board where you can't see them and hook them up to the dummy resistor that I made. And that's just going to have to be how we do this. It bothers me that I couldn't just replicate something that looked like the real thing, but you won't be able to see this very easily. Uh, you'd have to be looking for it. And so for the most part, it'll look just fine. And last but not least, I have to address the final resistor. And the reason I waited on this one is it's a little bit different. It's a little bit larger than the previous ones. Fortunately, I have this pen whose barrel is the right diameter for this one or close enough. So just like the others, I'm going to cut a piece out of this pen barrel. And then I have to figure out what I'm going to do about the end caps because on the original they have metal end caps and I was originally thinking maybe I would sculpt those out of the epoxy putty but that just didn't seem like a good option. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to make at least the sides of them out of strips of metal. This is basically just the lid of a tin can I had lying around. Once I've got my strips of metal, I can bend them around the ends of the pen barrel and cut them to length. And just like with the other resistors, the leads uh, wind around the ends. Uh, in this case, I solder them to the metal uh, sleeve, but uh, somehow I managed to not get most of that soldering process on camera. So now that I have two end pieces soldered together, I'm going to add a wire cross piece on each of them that I can use to attach the resistor to. I'll cut a notch in each end for the cross piece to fit into. And I'll solder the resistor to one of the cross pieces and put the thing into the barrel. Once I put the other end on and solder the resistor to the cross piece, then the electrical connections for this are all complete. So now I'll cap off the ends with some of that epoxy putty. I did toy with the idea of making a little 
thin uh, metal disc and soldering onto the ends, but uh, that was just an enormous pain in the butt, and I run the risk of melting the plastic barrel, so I figured I'd just go with the tried and true putty, and then I just trim off some of the excess with the rotary tool. And we'll finish it off with a sanding stick. Now the original has a little hole on each end, so I'm going to replicate that using a drill in a pin vise, and then flatten that down a little bit with the uh, sanding stick. And then we are ready to paint the thing. First some primer, and then I'll paint it red, and then we're ready to install it. See, it's a pretty good match. Now, you notice it's not quite the same size, but it's close enough. Uh, and also, the original had a black body and red on the ends, but I'm not convinced it wasn't red all over originally, and the paint just flaked or burnt off. Uh, I think having it all red is just fine. Okay, so now that the last component's on there, I need to deal with these pieces of fish paper that have broken off a little bit. I would replace them, except that they are riveted on under some terminals, and it would just be an enormous project to get them out of there, so I'm just super gluing them back together again. Now the board is done and ready to be installed, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Moot Workshop. If you enjoyed that video, please like it. If you're enjoying our videos in general, please let YouTube know and us know by subscribing to the channel and leave comments uh, on any of the videos that you like and we'll try to reply if we can. Uh, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time on the Moot Workshop.